if you if you change the future measurement, depending on the result you get earlier, you can correct for that randomness. Hmm. Okay? And you can make the whole thing deterministic. And you, you, you make a, a certain number of measurements, and then the qubits which are left over are the information which you want. Go ahead, Wolf. Yeah. It then functions like the brain, like an associative memory. Where you have like what? An associative, an associative memory, where you have a, a, a virtually infinite storage capacity, as we know our brain has, with all the pictures that you have seen throughout your life. And you have a few anchor points, and then the whole thing comes out. You pull it out. You don't have to do a serial search. You, you find out of the mess immediately what you need with a few cues. Sounds very, very similar. Yeah, this raises a, another, I think, related point that for me is in quantum computation and, and these sorts of problems important, and that is that one of the models that we have for the brain or, or for the way we process information, the way we think, is the classical computer. Right, and it's far too limiting. And here is a technology which is actually being developed, which is quite detailed, explicit, actualized to a certain scale, which has a very different, as it were, metaphorical or uh, quality about it. It opens up a completely different conceptual understanding. When you were speaking about how perception works versus, say, a linear uh, concatenation Thought, yeah. of thoughts, it's very different. One's proceeding holistically in a certain sense and associatively in one case, and one is proceeding in a very methodical and linear way. Both are valuable. Both are proper, but if you think you only have one type of thinking, you've limited far too narrowly. So here you have a case in quantum physics of a, of a now actual technology, the quantum computer, which has a very different modality for computation. It proceeds by holes, and then you, as it were, work from that holes through, as it were, moving in through these uh, defining elements that refines the calculation and in some cases it gets extraordinary speed up, extraordinary, uh, much, much faster kinds of computation. No, that's a good thing. I'll prepare for tomorrow. Okay. So this was a just a, a small glimpse into what one technology which is evolving now, which is really, which is really exciting. Maybe I Want to but are there mention, really computers like this? Sorry? Are there actual computers well, like this? Well, so far we have, the, the status is that this is, this is, as I mentioned, a big, a big, a big a worldwide program. You know, there are countries like, like uh, Australia or, or even China, for example, are putting 100, 200 million dollars a year into this kind of research. Mm -hmm. So this is really a big thing. Can you say and what, what, what is being applied to now? What areas are most... Well, it is not being applied yet. We are, we are in the stage of developing the hardware. Uh, where we stand is at the very beginning. We are able to have, to have uh, small quantum com computers which consists of four, maybe eight qubits only, which is much too small to do anything real. Okay, so, we are, so it's like in the, in the early days of computation, we are simply developing the f elementary elements and showing how we can put them together. So in a way, there's a kind of a blueprint is done. Already. It's more yeah. of a development now. It's a development, and, but there, there are very big challenges, mm -hmm. very big challenges in terms of, of the development, but we are in the development stage. But it's important also to say and that mathematicians, uh, theorists, have proved that certain kinds of problems mathematical problems, which are impossible or nearly impossible, or very, very difficult, become very simple using a quantum computer. So you have a theory which says if you can build a quantum computer, then a class of problems which have been in, intractable now can be simply solved. And in particular, the ones that are most, you might say, uh, I was going to say sexiest, but that's probably not the right <laughs> thing to say here. Well, the ones that have the most uh, excitement is uh, the factoring of large numbers. That is to say, you take a very large number and you 
find his prime factors. And that's used to transmit secure information, secrets, financial information. And that code, all of those secret codes, can be broken using a quantum computer. Martha, did you have a comment? More of a question. Um, I'm struggling to understand this. Um, um, from what you've told us so far, there seems to be a free lunch being had here. Um, you know, you type in the first two sentences of, you know, the universe in a single atom and, and you get the whole book. Somebody, before you got there and typed in the first two sentences, somebody had to set up the entanglements just right. Is, is that true? I mean, the, in analogy with Wolf's comment, um, you know, you need the right pattern of synaptic connections to make the network go into the right attractor state. So how do you program these nets and, and can they learn? Thank you very much for that question because that is extremely important. The point is that this initial state is, is the same for every problem you want to solve. It's a universal state. The pro, okay, so the state is exactly the same for any pro, so it has no, it carries no specific information. It's, it, it only, the, the only interesting thing is the connectedness, the connectedness among each other. And that is universal. And the program, the program you were mentioning, you were mentioning the word programming. The program is, is now something very different compared to a program in the usual computer. The program is the specific measurement sequence which you have to use. And that specific measurement sequence forces the, the, these qubits, which initially did not carry information, forces them to evolve towards carrying just the right information, which is the solution of the problem which you want to solve. And that's really fantastic. This, this is a completely new way of, of thinking about computation. It's mm -hmm. different from any, any computation people have been talking about so far. Mm -hmm. Up till completely now. Completely different. It's something absolutely new. Right. Up, up till now, everything has been built up piece by piece, bit by bit. Here, you're working, you know, the whole part relationships are quite different. <laughs> Through this massive entangled state, there's a kind of quantum holism, as it's called. And what you have to learn to do is to exploit that quantum holism. And it, I mean, this is a very rapidly evolving field. People are discovering new ways of working with that quantum holism, deepening it, texturing it, you know, and, and new possibilities emerge, surprising ones. We've thought for so many hundreds of years of building step by step, increment by increment. But this is now coming at it from the opposite side. Create this universal state, which is massively entangled, which is a whole and then work your way in through measurements to, as it were, break it up into a specific, okay? So you don't build a specific out of parts, you start with a whole and then condense it, condense the specific out of the whole. So right. in a sense, it's the first technical application of wholeness, you know? Right. It's really interesting. How, how, how do you develop the rules for, for, for determining the measurement sequence? Well, that's a, that's a very that's good question. It has not been solved for, for many problems so far. That's the programming the, question. How the do you programming develop, question. How do you program this, this device? There, there is a general theorem. <laughs> there is a general theorem that this kind of computer is equivalent to all classical computers, so it can do everything a classical computer can do, and it can do everything a conventional quantum computer can do, which is something different than this. So these theorems exist. How to find the, find the program in a specific case is probably as much a creative uh, procedure as it is in programming a standard computer. Yeah. You have to be clever to do right. it the right way. But, but there's you know? a set of problems which have oh, been solved which are of extraordinary value where we know so. the result. We, we, we've been able to prove those, uh, those theorems. You, the com you understand the it's question? It's a very good question, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a very good question. Uh, my feeling is that the answer is it can do much more, but there's no 
I mean, there is a, there is a proof that it can solve problems which a classical computer cannot solve within the time of the universe. That, there are proofs like that. That exists for certain problems. So it can do more. You're talking more in terms of calculation problems. Calculation problems which are so lengthy that it would take many times the lifetime of the universe. In the case of a quantum computer, of a we don't yet have one, but if it was a proper quantum computer, it would happen very quickly. And that's part of the reason so much money is going into the project, because it's so powerful. It allows us to solve problems which we, we really would like to solve, including Defense Department kind of problems, unfortunately. Um, but we are already at the end of our time. I'd just like to summarize a little bit of, of what we've been trying to do. You know, I spoke at the outset of this session concerning, you could say, this new understanding of reality, or the abandoning of a classical picture and the, uh, the arising of a much more subtle and uh, difficult engagement with, this, with, these quantum, with the quantum phenomena and quantum level of reality. How do, we, how do we understand the nature of the world? And this is one of the key problems that Your Holiness has been interested in. I think with regards to the quantum computer qubits and all the rest, what this shows is that our, our, our understandings uh, in terms of parts and holes has also been too limited. And that we have, as Anton said, you know, the first technological applications of true holism. Up until this time, you know, it's been kind of a metaphor that there, you know, there are holes. And it seems to me it's always been very vague. But now there is actually a mathematics and a technology of holism. What are the implications of that for our understanding of the world? This interconnectedness that Your Holiness is always speaking of. This is a completely interconnected state where all the possible, uh, you might say, uh, states are densely connected and all possible and potential past and futures are there. I mean, it's a rich field of interconnectedness. And it's, it's not just a, an abstract concept or a theoretical concept. This is something now which Anton builds in his laboratories, which will be sold at some point in the future in your in your stores, that we will use that kind of interconnectedness as part of our daily lives. So we, we tend to think of ourselves as built up bit by bit, and now we have qubit by qubit, you know, entangled to create these holes. To me, this is a very powerful, very powerful and inspiring idea, a picture based on what we know about physics, not just speculation, what we know about physics that has big philosophical implications.